So now in this video we're going to make a really simple and really cool circuit. We're going to make an NPN bipolar junction transistor current source. So we'll be able to set the current through the load here, whatever that may be, and it will hold that current pretty steadily as long as we provide enough power. So we have to set a voltage across this lower resistor. We do that with, in this case, a trim pot. So a voltage divider we can vary the voltage based on the supply voltage get a percentage of it so in any case we lose 0.6 volts though from base to emitter so whatever voltage we set here it'll be 0.6 volts less across the resistor but this is a pretty easy circuit to experiment with so we're going to grab the 2n3904 transistor right here so left pin emitter middle pin base right pin collector if i turn it uh, this way now the pins line up like you see on the uh, diagram right there. So I'm going to put the middle pin, the base, right to that jumper there. So that jumper, I'm going to put the trim pot. So you can see I already have jumpers to the uh, positive and the uh, negative rail. Negative rail is ground and our zero volt reference point. Middle pin there is the uh, wiper, the uh, part of the component that slides across the resistive element and we have a resistive element the two end pins as you can see there that uh, go to one to the positive supply one to the negative supply so we got it about halfway right now now I'm going to use a one kilo ohm resistor that makes the math easiest we use ohms law the uh, voltage across the resistor will result in the current flowing through that whole path there, that whole series pass, path. So if we use a one kilo ohm, 1000 ohm resistor for each volt across the resistor, we'll have one milliamp of current along that whole path. So I'm going to the bottom pin, the emitter right there, and going to ground. So that is it for the uh, current. It's actually a sink, as you can see here, it's towards the more negative side of the load but we still call it a current source anything that sets current is usually called a current source so now the rest of this will be uh, meters because we're dealing with a set current we have to read that we have that set current we can set the meter to measure voltage before we attach the probes because uh, the probes I clipped alligator clips two of them and then I crimped uh, jumpers onto these alligator clips so I can plug them into the board like that and keep my hands free and uh, unless they shoot off like that. But in any case, we will take uh, the black probe with the blue jumper and connect that. We can either put it to the negative rail or right to the resistor. Might make more sense if we go right to the resistor right there. And the, uh, the red one, let's clip that again. We're gonna go to the opposite side of the resistor and try not to short out on anything like I did earlier before I shot this scene so there you go this is still is not an accurate uh, measurement we have to actually have current flowing through the transistor and the resistor from the uh, collector up there otherwise it's just part of the voltage divider system right over there so that's kind of important I don't usually hear that explained so I'm going to the top pin of the transistor the collector there we have two volts and actually that was my target voltage I didn't really mean to uh, have it set already but you can see that uh, we're actually if I go up just a tad bit more it'll hit uh, two on the uh, power supply it's being a little more pesky so it was right on the edge but in any case we can go down to zero if we want and uh, no currents flowing we can go up to uh, about 4.4 volts approximately that's because of the diode drop from base to emitter so the voltage that we give from the trim pot isn't the exact same voltage across the resistor the uh, voltage actually goes down about 0.6 volts 0.7 volts approximately so in any case we measure the volt uh, resistor directly though and uh, we got a little more than 2 volts that is the main thing so now We'll remove that jumper again without that jumper completing the circuit a load a zero resistance load which is okay because we have the resistor limiting current we 
don't have an accurate voltage. So you got to make sure you complete the circuit like that to get it. So what I'm going to do is uh, unplug the jumpers. We're going to set the meter to measure milliamps of current now. So I'll just turn that to uh, milliamps and the uh, red probe for this meter you don't have to move it. Measures everything there but high current. Other meters you may have to uh, move it. So let's uh, zoom in. By the way we're using 5 volts right there right now. And uh, so we're going to put that to the collector. That's where I had one end of the red jumper. That's the top pin there before. And then the uh, red uh, probe here. We can put anywhere along the positive rail really. So I'm going to go to that jumper. I can go to that jumper and uh, there you see we got uh, 2.05 milliamps or I could go directly to the rail. doesn't matter again. It's all one connection point. So there we have it. We had the uh, basically 2.05 volts across a 1 kilo ohm resistor. That only works with a 1 kilo ohm resistor to get uh, 2.06 milliamps of current. So it's the resistance of the resistor and uh, you take the voltage divided by the resistance of the resistor. That's what the set current is. So I'm going to move this jumper up one spot, one row, grab an LED and put that in series. So now it's going through the LED and then the transistor. Remember the long lead, the anode has to be more positive. On the more positive side, short lead the cathode towards the more negative side. We still have that current and two resistors now will probably be too much to hold uh, that current. So I'll put them in series again. I'll tuck it in back there. And uh, yeah, that's too much. So what we're going to do, let's go back to, uh, we can bypass that resistor, just skip it. There we go, we got 2.05. What we can do is raise the supply voltage. That's what you got to do when your components demand more voltage than you're using. And so the current's going to go up because we're using a voltage divider. But it's going to be somewhere close to 4 volts. So 4 volts plus a little more because it's a voltage divider. It's a percentage of the voltage, but we're still losing about 0.6 volts at uh, the uh, base 2 emitter. So there we go. 4.76. It's not lighting the diode because I'm down one row. I'll go up one row so that the uh, LED, I mean, is included. There we go. We got the uh, current. Let's go up one more. Add another LED. And there you can see. 4.67. Let's try even another one. So it's not lit up now until I go up one row. Now the three of them are in series. So that looks like that's starting to come to the power limit. And when it comes to the voltage, they're blocking, dropping a little too much voltage. But uh, the current's still holding pretty, pretty close. So in any case, again, you got to have enough voltage, but as long as you use enough voltage, the current will hold true. Reason that changing the power supply voltage of a voltage divider though will change its voltage too and uh, so you got to take that into account especially when you have a diode drop involved for, with that but that's all topics to study in more detail later this is my quick uh, video series and this one went on pretty long so I'm going to end there make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting make sure you click like subscribe the bell we almost had a short circuit there that's not good but uh, in any case I will see you in the next video